This is the dehumidifier doing maintenance on and inside there's an oil filled capacitor, a pretty large one, and we need to safely discharge this before continuing. Capacitors can store enough energy to seriously hurt you or even kill you. It's important to understand how they work and how to stay safe. It's not a bad idea to wear rubber gloves. I'm going to start by removing the strap that holds the capacitor in. There's some tabs keeping the plastic top on. So I'm just going to carefully get the one tab off and then the whole thing comes off. Now before I discharge it, I am going to check the voltage just to see if our discharging has any effect. Um, obviously if I discharge it, then I wouldn't need to check the voltage, but for the purpose of demonstration, I want to know if there is any voltage beforehand. So I put it on volts DC mode. Um, if this mode, the voltmeter has a uh, nearly infinite internal resistance, that is that um, no current will flow between the two probes. Um, it's it's in the range of 1 to 10 million ohms, depending on the meter. Now, if I cross the probes while I am t uh, touching around, um, it will spark and, and could, you know, well, you make the two stick together, like weld them together, but it shouldn't damage the meter, um, but I won't let them touch. So let's go to the capacitor. You'll see that this side there's two wires coming off of, that's only one side of the capacitor, that is these are both the same. Um, and you can see it's just a split contact. Uh, we actually touch here and here. And I'm reading zero volts on the meter. So at this point we can continue with the discharging process even though it's probably unnecessary. A piece of metal that's insulated like a screwdriver and touch across the contacts and that would, if there was a lot of voltage, it would spark very intensely and it might stick the screwdriver to the contacts. It probably won't since we already measured, there's nothing there. Before I do that, something else I could do is use a 100 kilo ohm resistor which will uh, act as a trickle bleed off resistor and slowly allow the charge to um, even, um, just all the electrons to flow from one side to the other and bring the charge down to zero. Um, so just make sure when you're doing this you don't allow your clips to contact the metal can because if they both touch the can then they'll touch. So you want to clip the first uh, gator clip on and then just kind of take the second one and there, it should not spark because the, even if it was high voltage uh, because 100 kilo ohms is sufficient for um, the anything in the 120 volt range um, and this would take about 30 seconds to bring it down to a safe voltage and after a minute or two it'll be fully discharge to zero um, and as a final the final measure I am going to use a very low resistance um, bridge between the two contacts just a piece of metal and give it a nice solid touch okay so there's um, absolutely no charge on that capacitor so it would be safe to handle so now for testing the um, function of the capacitor itself, or not the function, but if it is um, not broken, we will first make sure that um, neither of the capacitor contacts have any electrical path to the can. That would indicate a short somewhere in there or damaged um, so we're going to put it on the ohm setting 
and right now it's reading OL, which means open loop, open. There's like a broken connection or no connection. So we're just going to touch here, see if anything changes. And it doesn't, which means that there's no connection at all between these two points. All right, so then we'll repeat that can to the second contact, still no connection. Next, I'm going to check the resistance between the two contacts, but I'll remove any connection to the rest of the circuit first. Well, actually, I just have to remove one side. That way I'm not reading the um, resistance between these two, whatever is going on the rest back there. Now the final test will show whether or not this capacitor can actually increase in charge. And we're still in the ohms mode and we're going to do a uh, ohms test between the two contacts. And you saw it started at zero and then it sort of went to open loop. Now this meter isn't reacting fast enough or it's it's not quite catching what's going on so I am going to use an, a fluke meter that is going to pick this up a little better. I'll start with it fully discharged. Now when a, a uh, ohm meter measures resistance it actually sends a current uh, out the red probe and return through the black probe and it will measure um, how much resistance is encountered whenever it tries to send that current through. Okay. Well, as it does that for a capacitor, it's actually going to start to charge the capacitor a little bit. So we're going to touch. You can see the resistance started in the kilo ohms, and now after a few seconds, it's into the mega ohms and it's increasing. Uh, so at seven million ohms, and it's just going up and up and up from there. Uh, so the expected behavior is that the resistance starts at zero and very, very rapidly increases toward infinite resistance um, and gets into the mega ohm range. Uh, so finally, I'll just show, since my fluke does have a capacitor mode, went ahead and put it on that, and this is measuring the capacitance in in microfarads right now. It's kind of hard to see, but up in the corner it said UF, and it should say 40, yep, 40 microfarads. Let me turn the guy for you. Right there, 40 microfarads. Now, don't rely only on um, your meter's capacitor mode, because just because a capacitor reads the correct rated capacitance does not mean that it could have other issues like uh, one of them could have a short to the can or something like that. So it's another verification, but don't rely singly on the capacitor mode. All right, so we're holding a good capacitor and for this project, that means we'll have to move on to diagnosing the compressor.